Hey guys, my name is Jeremy Griner, the creative manager on Darksiders 2, and welcome to your final community Q&A. The most feared of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Only death can account for the sins of the past and undo mankind's extinction. But at what price? Obviously everyone loves our universe and our fiction and lends itself well to other mediums out there. Um, but as far as movie deal right now, I'm not too sure. I think everyone's just focused on getting Darksiders 2 and death in your hands uh, in the weeks to come. But uh, you know, we'll be the first to let you know if we uh, have something like that coming out soon. So will it be a Darksiders 3, a Darksiders 4? I hear that question all the time. Uh, ultimately in the end, uh, you know, the studio started the Darksiders franchise to tell the story of all four horsemen of the apocalypse. So we'd like nothing more than to tell you the stories of strife and fury, and then maybe one day get all the uh, horsemen into one game together and have some fun with that. So as long as you guys all keep buying the games, we'll keep making them. And uh, you know, right now it's all about Darksiders 2 and death. I think actually for our inspiration it was more internal than external. Um, everyone knows Joe Mad, and uh, it's his art style, and so it's pretty easy for him to you know, kind of. I mean, not easy, but you know, for him to kind of look within and, and see how he wanted to, to illustrate this universe. So that's one of the really cool things about Darksiders 2 is, you know, when you look at all the AAA games out there, everything has gone super, super photo real. Like everything looks like real life. And I think Darksiders 2 is great because it's, uh, it's eclectic, it has a lot of flair, it's our fantastical world and universe. And so for inspiration, I think it's actually all from within. You know, any game out there has influences from other games. Um, Vigil is a studio made up of gamers. So, you know, Darksiders 2 is a game for gamers being made by gamers. When you come to, to different influences, I think it's across the map. It's really hard to put your finger down on anything. Um, you look at all the different uh, RPG elements that we have in Darksiders 2, and those come from everywhere, including our own. Like, you look at the possessed weapons, feed other items into that. That's pretty cool. To put my finger on one, or two, or three, or ten, or fifty games, would be would be pretty hard, but what I would will say is that you know this isn't an action adventure game. You know, in our genre right now, everything's getting more set piece oriented every single year. You know, it's tr turning into more of like the shooter space. Um, so what we wanted to do is create a true action adventure game, one that kind of harkens back to our childhoods. So this is a game that we want to play, and hopefully you guys can do too. So that's a really cool question, and actually it's perfect for me because my job is to listen to you guys and what your feedback was from DS1 so we can implement it into development for Darksiders 2. Um, so one of those points of feedback was the horse. You know, I'm a horseman of the apocalypse, I don't get it until halfway through the game. So Darksiders 2, you start off on despair. Same thing goes for backtracking. You know, a lot of guys weren't quite a fan of that, so we have different mechanics in there to make sure you don't have to do that. Um, and it, when talking about inspirations for Darksiders 2 and you know whether there were some left off from one, Certainly, you know, a lot of what we have in, in Darksiders 2 is what we wanted in the original, but you can only get so much into the first ship product, uh, especially when you're growing the engine from the ground up on your own. Uh, so when you look at the loot and the NPC interactions, skill trees, leveling system, side quests, vast overworlds, that's, uh, much of that is what we wanted originally, and uh, thankfully we got it all into Darksiders 2. Yes, Argol's Tomb. Obviously everyone's psyched about that, and if you got the limited edition, you're getting that for free. Um, and we do have plans for a robust DLC program. Um, ultimately, we want to support our fans. We want to have DLC content. I think you all expect that these days. So we're planning on providing it. And uh, just keep your ears open, and uh, we'll let you know. I feel like if you truck down the critical path, literally sprinting, trying to get to the finish line, it's going to take you around 20 hours. Um, if you look around just a little bit, it's going to take you easily 25, 30. So that's just a critical path. That's only completing the things that you have to do in order to finish the game. Now we do have a ton of side content. When I say ton, I mean a ton. That's why we need a couple extra months to polish it up. <laughs> uh, so when you look at all that and you put the whole package together, you can easily double or triple what the numbers I just gave you. I'm not sure if we have this coded in as a chibi, but I'd have to say 100% completion. Um, you know, 
and I've been saying how big this game is, and it's massive. So, good luck with that. <laughs> In kilometers, I don't know. I work, I work and live in the U.S. and we talk miles, man. So, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the size of Dark Siders 2, uh, we said in the past, and it still holds true. The first zone called the Maker's Realm or the Forge Lands, the physical geometry of it is the entirety of Dark Siders 1. So that's the first zone in the game. There's three more after that, and a little bit of other content. So uh, I can't really put a number on it since I don't know kilometers, but uh, yeah, it's pretty darn big. <laughs> Darksiders 2 ships here in Australia on August 16th, so make sure to go out and pre-order today. Uh, upgrade immediately to the limited edition and get our first DLC drop called Argyle's Tomb absolutely free. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Darksiders 2. Pre-order it now to get the limited edition.